Hello and good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. <laughs> I'll spare you the rest. We are in, uh, I think it's Winnemah National Forest. It's in kind of like South Central Oregon. And we are at a location that was um, part of the fires last year. Uh, so there is a lot of scarred trees, a lot of burnout, which I'm going to show you. Um, and if you guys remember last fall, I introduced you to a new friend of mine. His name is Ron. He gave a lot of sagely advice, which was much appreciated. Unpleasant things uh, will happen and can happen. But you don't have to allow those things that are unpleasant to affect your day or your mentality or perspective of your day. It's, um, I'll link the video here in a card. At any rate, um, so he was camp hosting uh, like just down the way here last year and uh, was also sent away from his camp hosting job um, due to forest fire, just like I was last year. Now, I really wanted to go check out my old campground and see what it's like, but the road going from Estacada up into where I was camp hosting is still closed um, because of mudslides and logging. And we got to finish our Mr. Rogers moment and put on our shoes, right? Um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to be able to go explore up there, unfortunately. Um, but... This area is not officially open to camping anymore. Um, there is a nice picnic area. There's um, old bathrooms here, they're closed. It doesn't look like any of the structures were damaged by the fire um, from last fall, but uh, the trees certainly were. It's really trippy, you guys. <laughs> it's really crazy to see because, you know, fire acts, I guess, the best way to say it is unpredictable because like there's even like half and half trees which i'll show you um where half the tree is damaged and half the tree looks fine like phantom of the opera trees <laughs> you know we're also camping during an excessive heat warning <clears throat> so i'll tell you guys a little bit about how riot and i are mitigating that oh Riot has been studying the behavior of squirrels. It's that Bruce Lee approach. So given that we're in an excessive heat warning, which isn't terrible, it's like the highs are like 93, 94, which is still hot, hot, hot. Oh, here's another spider. I am so full of spider bites and it's no wonder we are like, I hope you don't, no one has arachnophobia here because, man, I am, I am like in a sea of spiders. Anywho, what was I grabbing? Oh, yeah. Um, so it's going to be like 93 today, and it's been an excessive heat warning. There's shade with the trees. I am parked at a clearing. You guys can see this. And the sun's over there. And it will come across over here because I need solar still, but the idea is that I still have some shade to help keep the rig and us more cool. Um, this is a GPS slash remote collar, which is really helpful because I let her go bounding through the trees. She never really goes off too far, but I like the idea of being able to have a little more control and then the peace of mind that I can tell where she's at. Um, there's a link. There's always links to everything. Of It's called Riot Gear down in the description box. So if you guys are ever curious about something that I'm using for her or a lot of you have had questions about her raw diet, and I have a link to the raw diet um, book that I recommend. Um, you know, I've tailored her diet specific to her and your dog's nutrition is going to be needing to be specific to your individual dog. So the raw feeding book really gives um, you comprehension so that you can be like your own 
canine nutritionist almost. So I highly recommend that book if you have raw feeding questions. Um, but the, uh, a similar GPS remote collar is in the description box. Uh, her favorite toys, her GoPro harness, all that kind of stuff is down in the um, description box. <laughs> So hopefully this ca camera angle isn't showing how crooked my face is because I know I have a better face for a podcast than I do a YouTube channel, but I'm going to take you this way first real quick just so you can see um, some of the really bad burn and how much logging they have cut down and stacked up. Uh, it's pretty incredible and from my understanding, I mean it was like full forest. This forest is like half burnt but I'm gonna walk that way just so that we have a little bit of canopy coverage because it gets really hot. And since I decided to snooze today, we're starting later and it means it's already pretty hot. And as we um, continue on and, and get back to camp in a couple hours, because we'll probably hike for a couple hours here, um, I'll go through some of the other ways that we're dealing with the heat. I'm not so much worried about myself. It's riot. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys that are traveling with pets feel the same way. You're not as worried about yourself uh, as you are your pet. All right. So as you guys can see, they came in and they cut a clearing around all these electricity poles. I assume they're electricity poles or some kind of poles, some kind of wiring. And they created a fire barrier on each side. You can see that there used to be trees on either side of this road. Maybe not as close as like right up to the road line, but pretty close. Like Riot is sniffing some cut down tree stumps. And you can see just like an enormous amount of gerbil bedding, <laughs> otherwise known as wood chips, just everywhere. And if we come over here, you can see this stump is burnt and had been cut recent. And then all of this is like ash. It almost feels like one of those mass burial sites like you see in India, you know where the sadhus go, some of the sadhus, if you're familiar, you know, and they'll cover themselves with ashes. Anyway, um, but for trees, it's just like, it's so much ash piled up around here and wood chips and we'll go take a look at some of the logging and I'll get some better pictures um, of all the burnt up trees. And then we'll walk the other way where we hear the deers. Right deer? You're a deer? You're not a deer, you're a dog. All right, we can look at all this burnt out tree line area. These trees are super burnt, super dead. You can see the massive amount of wood chips. Ooh, the sun is getting pretty hot. All right. You can see we have some roots that have been dug up here. And then this massive pile of logs. So if you're looking for firewood for, <laughs> for your house, I've seen people coming in and with a chainsaw and like hacking and then coming out, you know, with truckloads of this stuff. I would fly the drone around, but uh, I checked the Before You Fly app and uh, we're in a restricted area, so I'm not able to fly the drone or I, I feel like this would be a really cool area to get drone coverage. So I'm sorry, it's out of my hands. It's a restricted flight area. Hey, Riot, where's your Frisbee? Riot, where's Frisbee? She don't know. We're gonna have to spend a minute finding it. Oh, she did know. Oh, I'm a asshole. You knew. Ye of little faith, huh? Should have had faith in her. Riot is the best teacher. She always teaches me lessons like that. She always makes me see where I'm being a dick. And I appreciate that about her. <laughs> Isn't it crazy just to see all this burnout? 
I know a lot of you viewers, you've mentioned in the comments you live in Oregon. Did you, uh, do you know any more details about this? I'm like in Winnema, Fremont, north of Klamath Falls right now. I know we're under a fire weather watch as well for right now. We're supposed to have a lightning storm start tonight and it's supposed to start with dry lightning. I know that's like exactly what starts a lot of these fires, which is <sighs> kind of scary. I'm keeping the trailer hitched up just in case. And I have weather bug on my phone uh, and it will send me an alert of nearby lightning if needed. That's a good app to have. If you can tell, I mean, I just showered, so I don't want to get too filthy, but I guess I'm on a hike, so I'm going to. But this is all ash. Yuck. Now, some of you might be wondering why I don't have a specific bowl for Riot. Two reasons. One, her frisbee actually works as like a little water trough if I flip it, you know, upside down. And then two, she has learned over the years to drink out of a bottle like to lap it out of the mouth. And I'm sure a lot of people think I'm just disgusting for sharing with my dog like that, but I guess I'm somewhat disgusting. <laughs> hey, girlfriend. Oh, I just kicked the tripod. Here you can see a lot more of the burnout. Uh, the little trees are just charred and crispy. You can see the burn in the soil and the ash. You can see the burnt logs. I mean, it's like super charred, you know? Here's kind of a good example of that erratic nature that I was talking about that you can see on a lot of the trees where like all of this is like charred but as we go around to this side, it's, it's like a healthy tree and you can see the moss is still growing and some of the branches on this side are okay and they're growing um, some fresh needles and fresh moss. But as we go on this side, on this side, it's burnt, it's like charred. So, you know, it's, it's just so interesting, you know, and Underneath these newer dried pine leaves, you have like these super charred ones. You guys can see these. They're just like crisp from the fire last year that are like underneath the newer fallen ones. And then my favorite thing, my most favorite thing is finding little guys like this. Oh, he feels so lush. I shouldn't touch him. I don't want to mess with him too much. But like, you know, through all this burnt, wreckage I mean so much of it is like destroyed and then you find this like hopeful new growth and I just feel like this is like nature's poetry right here <laughs> and here we come upon a little bit of infrastructure that looks like it did not make it so we might not be too far from where my friend Ron was camp posting maybe he camp posted right here I haven't texted him I don't have good cell phone reception here I'm only here for a couple days because I can only go two or three days without reception and then I have to be in reception, of course. For work is what I'm saying. Ooh, okay, I'll bring the camera over here, but these wires are all burnt up and the conduit that protects them is totally fried. So this must have been an electrical box. You can see this part is melted. That's crazy town. The wires look like they've been properly cut over here. I wonder if that was a safety thing. I'm just exploratory. I'm not saying I'm knowledgeable on this fire stuff. You know, I just, I, I had the experience last year. So I was curious about what it would be like to explore an area that also was impacted. Um, but if any of you guys have fire knowledge like on this kind of stuff, please leave it in the comments below because I think it's helpful knowledge for everyone to know. And I can only share what I know. And 
I'm fairly ignorant, as we all know. All right, I hope you guys can see this. It's just like melted. All this conduit is just like melted. Melted plastic. And it probably just totally melted off this part. Again, please leave in the comments where I'm dumb and wrong. I know I can count on people to do that. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube, for keeping me humble and my humiliation on point. Oh, no, 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 no. YouTube song. Okay, so I just came upon this tree here. And it looks like there's like healthy tree underneath the burn. I don't want to pick at it. I don't want to cause more problems. I am picking at it though, aren't I? <sighs> anyway, there seems to be sap. Is that like tree blood? Is it like crying out? Poor tree. And it looks like if I look in between some of these charred areas, like there's brown and sap. So will this regenerate? I have to do some research. All right, so here is like, this is where like, again, fire is so interesting to me because I can see burnt ash. I can see burnt um, pine needles on the ground. That looks like a burnt area, burnt here. There's a can that was obviously burnt. I should probably pick that up and bring it with. Um, but then this building is intact. And well, this is metal, but it also doesn't look charred. So it's just like so interesting to me. This area over here is real burnt looking, but then this tree is okay. Fire is just so erratic, so unpredictable. I guess that's why it's so dangerous. I don't know, here's an interesting question for you guys. Would you rather live in an area prone to forest fires like the Pacific Northwest up here? Or would you rather live in an area that's prone to flooding, like um, parts of Florida, uh, New Orleans, stuff like that? <laughs> or would you rather live in Tornado Valley? Um, let's start with those three. Would you rather live in a forest fire prone area, a flood pr prone area, or Tornado Valley? What would be your preference if you had to choose? All right, here we come to another point of interest. Over here, we see lots of fire damaged trees. A lot of burnt up little babies. Some new growth as well, trying to struggle its way through. We made our way to this road, which is a little more heavily used and you'll see why in a second. But what I find really interesting is that on this side, this side of the road has been largely unimpacted by the fire. Rick. The best chairs come from nature. <laughs> Do any of you guys have phrases that you say so often that they begin to like lose meaning? Like for parents, I assume it's like, go clean your room, go clean your room, or um, do the dishes or, you know, something like that. For me, it's, where's your Frisbee? Where's your Frisbee? Go find Frisbee. Where's your Frisbee? Go find Frisbee. To the point where like by the end of a hike, a lot of times the words don't seem to mean anything anymore. <laughs> she always finds it, but it's just like, I have to repeat it so often because she picks up on a uh, smell and she drops the Frisbee and then she's off to the races and a lot of times she's deep in the woods, so I can't even see her, so I don't know where the Frisbee is. Anyway, I'm starting to wonder if I should make like a Who Moved My Cheese parody, but called like Where's Your Frisbee or Where'd You Lose Your Frisbee? <laughs> hey, Riot, Riot, will you go find Frisbee, please? Riot, it's right there. This time I see it. Riot, come, 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 go to Frisbee. Good girl, good girl. If anyone's wondering, Dota, and I'm probably saying it wrong, but it's like Swedish for gill. Yeah. 
Yeah, because it's so hot, huh? Oh, that feels good. I don't know if there's any more peaceful zen sound than water going over old logs. It's like instant relaxation. You can see we're back into fire damaged area. It goes from okay, lush, green, beautiful, and then just right here, damaged, burnt, dead. The abrupt transition of lush, green, affluent forest to like a poverty forest reminds me of Chicago. Like uh, for those of you that live in that neighborhood, I know other big cities are kind of like this. One block, you see the you know $2 million condos, and then you turn the corner and you're in Section 8 housing. Um, and you see people dope fiend leaning everywhere. And it's like the craziest thing, just block by block, how it can change. I'm thinking of the area particularly by Marshall Field Housing, again, for those of you that are familiar with Chicago, how that is really up and coming with some like super expensive condos there in Old Town area. And then as you turn the block and you go by the uh, old field housing, it's like not good. Or where Cabrini Green was, there's still some housing, some Cabrini Green housing. And then just across the way where they tore some of the housing down, you have these new super expensive condos. This forest reminds me of that, but like nature's version. So maybe the fact that the cities are like that isn't so far away from nature. Maybe that's just the way things are. Maybe it's not a bad thing, it just is an is thing. I know I think too much. I don't try to, it's just... It's how I'm wired. You guys wanna come sit over here with me and take a look instead of listening to me give myself a therapy lesson? <laughs> I really appreciate all of you coming on this journey with me. All right, here's your moment of zen. Right, where's Frisbee? Go find Frisbee, please. Thank you. For the millionth time. Oh my God. Whew, that was nice and sweaty. Okay, so other things I do to help keep Riot more cool is I have a cooling mat for her that I got on Amazon. I'll try and find the link. This thing is really old, but it's held up for years and years and years. So I highly recommend it. You do have to keep it like in the shade or wet it down to keep it cool. Um, but it really works. Um, if they lay on it too long, uh, it will start heating up, but it still helps. I'll soak her down every so often or walk down uh, to another little inlet of river. There's a couple clips of Robert, Riot, and I going down to the other little inlet to the river that's closer to where our camp is. Um, and in it, you'll see Robert is using this like cooling cloth. I have one as well. I haven't taken it out of the package yet. Um, I grew up without air conditioning in Wisconsin, which we'll get into the 90s. Um, and to this day, my parents only have air conditioning in the room that my dad sleeps in. Um, because yes, I come from a family. I don't remember a time where my parents slept in the same room. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. 
but in the room that my dad sleeps in, he has an air conditioner, and I don't know that they had that my whole life. I think they got that once I was a little bit older, but my mom doesn't like air conditioning at all, so I am used to every summer dealing with the heat. The difference is, is in Wisconsin, it's also absurdly humid. Same thing in Chicago, but when I lived in Chicago, I had air conditioning units. Um, but my whole life until I was 17, I lived without air conditioning. So it's not like a huge deal to me. Um, I feel like my body can adapt to it. And I have the added benefit that over here on the west side of the United States, it's like a drier heat. And you know, they kind of make those jokes of, oh, it's a dry heat, like down in Arizona and stuff. But I tell you what, it really makes a difference. It makes a huge, huge difference. And then the other thing I do to keep cool is um, I have a fan. It's just a cheap 12 volt fan I got at Walmart in the automotive section. And then I tend to eat cooling type foods. Um, there's like uh, Chinese philosophy on this. I follow it for Riot more so than myself because she's prone to allergies. So I tend to feed her cooling type foods. There's like hot foods, neutral foods, and cooling type foods. Um, so I try and feed her like more pollock and um, turkey, quail. What else is on your list? Beef is neutral, so I tend to feed her more beef. I was feeding her lamb because out here you can find lamb for fairly cheap, but then I came to find that lamb is a hot food and it can contribute to her allergies. So anyway, um, but what I tend to eat, I eat really boring. So I'm gonna have an apple with peanut butter and raisins on it. Sometimes I purposely eat raisins just so I have an excuse not to share my food with Riot. Otherwise she like guilt trips me into sharing everything I eat, which is just absurd, I realize, but I can't be the only one. These are the problems of being a single lady. Now, given the nature of Riot gallivanting through the forest, some of you might be wondering, I do check her for uh, ticks, and uh, yesterday I found one right after our walk. It hadn't even attached yet, and I um, do use a natural flea and tick. Um, it's made of like peppermint, clove, eugenol, and like one other essential oil, and that's what I tend to use. It's been effective everywhere except for Minnesota, and North Dakota. The ticks in those areas are one, absurd. They're just like, her and I were just covered in ticks when we visited those states. And um, and like, just so many of them, <laughs> just so many of them. And I was like full of like tick poison, like that spray, you know, you put on yourself and they still got me. So, but I'm used to that from growing up in Wisconsin. That was just like a reality. We didn't even use preventatives. We just picked him off right away when you got back home. <laughs> mm. The other thing I wanna make sure that I mention is I am being cautious of camping underneath um, limbs that might've been damaged from fire in case there's like widow makers as they call them. So I did observe before I camped and that's a good um, tip or rule of thumb for anyone that's camping in woods or forest or anywhere with trees regardless is to be aware of any broken, loose, damaged branches that could fall on you or your rig. Um, so I am mindful of that and, and I'm camped in an area, we're camped in an area um, that it, everything looks to not be fire damaged in this immediate vicinity. None of the branches look um, damaged and then it looks pretty clear up top over my rig. But you know, we're mindful of that and we recommend it. Um, it does seem with the drought that this is gonna be a really risky fire season. I don't know what that means for my um, summer travel plans. Uh, we'll see, I'm kinda of going by the seat of my pants. We'll see. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate you coming and exploring the burnt out areas with us. I hope you found it as interesting as I found it. And we'll see you next time where uh, we're gonna be getting summer ready, if you will. It will make more sense when it, when you see the video. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all you guys being so supportive and so kind as I bump my head through navigating this YouTube universe. I, I really enjoy making these videos, even if they're god awful. 
And I know my personality is not always likable and not everyone's going to like me. I don't know. Anyway, as I fumble through, I just appreciate everyone being so supportive. And um, I really like being able to share my travels because I love people at a distance <laughs> and in small quantities. But, you know, I really appreciate all of you. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here, but I really do appreciate you. Thank you.